Crumpets, crumpets, crumpets. Scones, scones, scones. Hmm. Yes. Hup, hup. Good morrow, vicar. Good morrow, Mr. Thompson. Wonderful service yesterday, vicar. Ah, thank you, Mr. Thompson. A bit humbly jumbly with the clatterings of noisy little children, however. Yes, a veritable cacophony of whines, whimpers, shuffles, and scamperings from those whose youth has rendered them incapable of worshipping our Lord as he commands, like proper Englishmen. And many of our older members found their discord rather distracting. Vivian Jambutter, for example, told me that her fussy little band of offspring has prevented her from experiencing an uninterrupted service for the better part of a decade. Yes, and Constable Fishbottom complained to me that the congregation's children raised a ruckus during at least 15% of your 98-minute preachment yesterday. Yes, and if the children can't sit through such a brief homily, how can we possibly expect them to remain unfidgeted during a proper sermon? So then, Vicar, it appears that the problem set before us is that the children are inhibiting the establishment of a distraction-free worship service for the adults. How might we unpuzzle this conundrum? Hmm. Say, Mr. Thompson, why don't we suffer not the little children and forbid them from coming to church until they prove themselves worthy of the presence of Christ in his kingdom? Perhaps we could find a better approach, Vicar, as what you've just suggested is rather exactly the opposite of what Jesus commands in Matthew 19.14. Is it? I'm afraid so, Vicar. However, perhaps we could compromise. What if, instead of hindering children from coming to Christ entirely, we only mostly hinder them by removing them from the divine service in the sanctuary and sending them to another part of the building where some half-trained layman can give them a paltry amount of instruction buried beneath the clutter of crafts and activities that will only further erode their minuscule attention spans? And you think the congregation will embrace this? If we give this practice a rather holy-sounding name, I believe they will. But what could that name possibly be? St. Crispin's Ghost, I've got it! Macaroni 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 Make a macaroni cross and then you all will be redeemed Make a macaroni cross and then we all will be redeemed Good gimlet gravy, Vicar, that was a smashing success. Yes, a most triumphant victory for age segregation-induced propriety. I can tell you that the adults quite adored not having their worship of Christ disturbed by the horrific sound of children learning to be Christians. Yes, and I'm happy to announce that the young ones were rather enraptured by their custom-fitted form of worship that required turning their attention to the saving word of God for a mere five seconds before they were invited to dive headfirst into a pile of pencils, paste, and puppets for the remainder of the hour. So then, all in all, I'd say children's church is a perfect solution to the problems created by the stuffy old multi-generational model of worship so foolishly employed by all the Christians in the history of forever until five seconds ago. Indeed, Vicar. However, might there be some long-term drawbacks associated with our rather ingenious innovation? I can't fathom a one, can you? Unfortunately, yes. I foresee obstacles on each end. Concerning the adults, it's worth noting that kicking annoying Christians out of the sanctuary in order to remain nice and cozy is not substantially different from kicking annoying doctrine out of the sanctuary when it makes you equally uncomfortable. Therefore, I fear that by encouraging parents to dismiss their bothersome children, we may inadvertently train them to dismiss our Lord himself whenever his word nags and whines at their consciences. And as for the children, since one of the greatest causes of youth turning away from the faith is never seeing their parents exercise the faith, it's perhaps a profoundly stupid idea to take them away from their parents during the one measly hour a week when that actually happens. So while children's church may result in keeping our sanctuaries rather tranquil today, I'm afraid that the practice will quite likely result in keeping those same sanctuaries rather empty in 30 years. Wait a bliffity second there, Mr. Thompson. Are you actually suggesting that refusing to bear one another's burdens and engage in the kind of self-sacrificing fellowship divinely prescribed by the apostles is harmful to the spiritual formation of adults? And are you furthermore suggesting that never hearing the actual pastor of your church preach to you and never learning the liturgy and never sharing a hymnal with your mother or kneeling beside your father at the communion rail and never seeing your neighbors be baptized and never hearing the same gospel from the same Bible that transcends generations and cultures and brings salvation to people of all ages would actually be detrimental to our youth? Well, when you put it that way, I suppose children's church sounds perfectly harmless. So, children, what did we learn today? I learned Jesus and Peter walked on water. Very good, Thomas. I learned that bad things will never happen if you trust in God. Well, that's not exactly right, Edward. I learned that even though I can't swim, I can still walk on the pond in my backyard. Right. Don't actually 
try that, Henry. And I learned that if you put macaroni really far up your nose, your brain forgets how the sentence finishes. Percy, we should probably get you to a doctor right about now. 